or I just really connected with the the style, the culture. Um, but anyway, I was just like, oh my God, I want to do that. I was four years old, way too shy to go on my own. So my best friend went with me and um, uh, she hated it. I loved it. So I stayed and I was there faithfully every week to dance and started performing when I was eight and just, I just loved it. Beautiful. So what is the, what's the essence that comes through you? What is it that happens in you that made you recognize Hula as a part of your way of being? Um, it's really hard to explain. I know that, um, I was, like I said, I was very shy. And I f almost feel like a different person when I'm dancing. Mm -hmm. um, at that time I did. Now it all feels like part of me. But when I was younger, like, I didn't really talk to a lot of people. Um, you know, just very shy, always with my mom. And being on stage, I, I kind of felt like I became a different person. Um, like some calming, I was rarely nervous, um, like just some calming thing came over me and just, I could just perform and like share the joy of how I felt about this art form with others while I was on stage. Mm. So you get lost in it? Yeah. So we are excited to have you come teach us at Kumbe. I've been dying to do hula. I feel like Kumbe is an African diasporic dance center. And these, I feel like there's so much in hula for black women, especially. I think there's wonderful things in it for everyone. And I want this for us because I feel that there's a sense of calm that comes over you when yep. you get in harmony with your pelvic bowl and the floor of your womanhood. Is that, and did you dance when you were pregnant too? Um, I didn't dance as often. I may have like just kind of moved my body a little bit um, with my daughter more so. Um, just was I wanted her to hear the music and just fall in love with it the way that I did in the in the womb <laughs> um but it is very calming and it just i don't know i can't even, like i really can't even explain it listening to hawaii music just does like a complete calming job on my entire soul like i could be in a terrible mood i could be sad i could be angry and sometimes i'm just like you know what i need some hawaii music today to just soothe my soul even if I'm not moving. Your emotions. Yeah, even if I'm not moving, if I'm just listening, you know. And what do you think? So we know it's going to relax us, but what do you think the health benefits of it are? Um, really getting your 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 body moving and and your body and your mind to work together, um, because a lot of times when we dance, we're just kind of we're just mm -hmm. dancing and doing steps. Right, so you remember the steps one and two and three and four, but with hula, you're literally telling a story with your hands, with your face, with your body, everything is telling a story. So you have to connect it all together in order to um, really get that story across to the audience. So um, I think it's like really a health, a, a mental health benefit because you have to calm your mind and have to stop you know, thinking about everything else in order to just focus on this one thing um, in order to get your story across. Bringing you centered in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, one of the reasons I'm excited to, I have a lot of martial arts study in my background. I study Tai Chi and Qigong and the Kung Fu form. And hula coming to us by way of the Polynesian people into Hawaii, I feel like I'm going to experience that synergy because when you talk about getting yourself centered to tell the story that's often like um as you learn tai chi says each movement has a name and they're yeah. very poetic names right so 
as you learn different forms and I'm guessing different dances, you start to remember like White Crane, what that move is and how it fits into the poetry of the story. Yeah, very true. Um, I've learned a lot. I don't, I can't speak Hawaiian flu fluently, obviously, but I've learned a lot of Hawaiian just by um, learning different songs and studying different songs because a lot of things are repetitive. Um, so you learn things like, you know, what the moon is and um, the sun and the water and, and things like that. You hear those things so often that you kind of know what you should be doing in that moment. Um, but also, um, also it just kind of the movement along with the, I forgot what I was, girl, I forgot what I was saying. The movement Five, along two, with, um, along with the words helps you to, to remember like, oh yes, Kai, ocean. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do like this and I'm going to, it's going to be an ocean. Or if I'm saying like, I'm talking about my eyes and I'm talking about, um, you know, Maka, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be here and I'm going to focus on my eyes. So yeah, it's just, I love it so much. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds like similar to the, other studies it helps your brain work to get your right and your left side kind of harmonize yeah and we need this more and more and more as we move through time you know as the white matter shifts out of our mind into gray matter that gray matter has the ability to to bring our hemispheres together mm. so movements that give us calm and centering and the connection with nature. It's, it's brilliant. It's indigenous dance. Right? Yeah. It's the brilliance of indigeny. So will you share um, what some of the myths? That, I know Pele is the goddess of the volcano and mm -hmm. her sister bought her hula. Will you share the myth? Um, well, there's, there's a couple of different stories about who was what goddess was the first to do hula um what i was taught is what i learned rather was that um hiiaka h-i-i-a-k-a hiiaka she um started dancing for her sister pele and pele is the goddess of fire goddess of lava and um so she was dancing for her sister and one of the legends of Pele is that Pele asked Hiiaka, uh, she had, Hiiaka had a beloved uh, village um, where she used to have her best friend and all these people. So Pele once asked her to go get her lover from another island. So she asked Hiiaka to travel to another island to go get her lover and bring him back to her. Uh, in the travel back, her lover, um, I can't remember his name right now, um, fell in love with Hiiaka. And Pele saw that. Hiiaka wasn't in love with him, but he fell in love with her. Pele saw that, and she was, got so angry that she burned Hiiaka's town um, that she loved so much. Yes. That's just one of the stories. Um that I, I remember hearing and dancing about um, as I got older. But um, that's one of the stories. Another story is that a goddess Laka is the one who's the first one who was to do hula. And each island um, kind of says, the they, they have the, the story of, you know, our island was the first, hula was first done on our island by this goddess or that goddess. Um, so it, it kind of differs depend, depending on who you speak, speak to. Beautiful. Now, I also learned how missionaries and colonialism impacted Hula and that, yeah. I believe, 1830? Yes. Yeah. ban on the island. And the, our, the reasoning, I'm guessing, is similar to why they ban Black people from dancing as we were communicating and communing with spirits. Um, yeah, it was seen as unclean. It was seen as, um, you know, 
devil worship or, you know, just not clean as, you know, when it came to Christian Christianity and Christians. And there was a queen, a Hawaiian queen who converted to Christianity. I forget her name. Ka'ahumanu, I think her name was. Um, she converted to Christianity and she banned hula throughout the island. A Hawaiian woman banned a Hawaiian queen. Yeah. Um, and converted, when had, converted. The con the <laughs> I, I posted about it on your class page, actually. Yeah. On this. Yeah. Um, and then the she passed away, and the next king, um, King David Kalakaua, he was the one who brought Hula back, and you know, let all the people have Hula again. And there's a huge um, festival. He he used to be called the Merry Monarch because he was just so joyous and, and happy. Um, so they have a large festival in Hilo every year, every April around Easter, um, called the Merry Monarch Hula Festival, and it's, it's celebrating him, celebrating Hula, and um, like the biggest and best. It's like the Olympics of Hula. The biggest and best go wow. to Hilo and they compete for top prizes. Ooh, that must be remarkable to be it here. really is it really is i went to the 50th the 50th anniversary i want to say 20 i was pregnant so 20 6 2017 no no 2013 wow yeah it was 2013 um i went to the 50th anniversary and it was like ugh, it's amazing now my last a d deep kind of question. There's old hula and there's new hula. What does that mean? And does it relate to the time of it being banned and it being resurrected? Yeah, so there's ancient hula, which is called kahiko. And that is um, like the original hula done with no music. Uh, it's just chanting. So they use gourds or drums as the um you know to keep the rhythm mm -hmm. and you can tell the difference it's less graceful usually um sometimes less smiling the stories are a little bit different um and that was done prior to well really prior to like uh, missionaries and coming and bringing instruments um so then later next is modern hula which is awana and that is um you'll see it's more graceful more joyous people are smiling and um it's still storytelling in both um just the storytelling the way of storytelling is a little bit different in awana in that um you know you see the hands moving a little more gracefully as opposed to you know straight and stiff you see um more hip movements and um, just more expression in the face when it comes to um, Awana. Would you say it became more melodic with the introduction of more instruments, kind of? Yeah, absolutely. The um, the ukulele and guitars and um, pianos, things like that, when all of those came in and were added to the music. and Because a lot of the music, you'll, the one that I'm teaching this weekend actually has both a kahiko and awana version to it. So um, you will you can hear the distinct difference between the two and the song that I'll be teaching. And, you know, the, when the music comes in, it's like a whole different feeling in your body comes, it comes over you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening to it this morning. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. This is going to be so, so sweet. Yeah. It makes and sense. I am so excited for this Saturday. We'll be convening at Kumbe at 2 o'clock for Michaela's Hawaiian Dance 101 Hula Workshop. Is it, it's 2? I thought it was 12. It's 2? 2. Okay. It's 2. It's <laughs> I do a lot of scheduling. Yes, we're doing two because if you want to come get your sweat on before, we want to be able to be able to um, sweat with Jenny Jam and then come hula if they would like. But I also got to say that I hope this is the first of many and I want to get some live instruments. I didn't know. We, we can get you some musicians. It's cool. Well, you know what? I have a friend 
who is an amazing singer. Amazing. Um, he was actually on American Idol. He lives here in New York. Um, and we connected because of Hula. He lived in Hawaii. He's danced at the Mary Monarch. We know some of the same people. Um, and he's, he's actually black. He's mixed black and white. Wow. Um, but he spent a lot of time learning and dancing Hula and singing and performing. So maybe we can get him to come and sing some songs for us. We'll see. Girl, that sounds absolutely dreamy. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and to share about the Hula class. I look forward to seeing you Saturday. I'm excited. I'm very excited and wish you a beautiful day. Come out and dance with us. Everyone. Yes, Boy, come to class. So joyful, so joyful. Have a great day, Michaela. Thank you, you too. Bye. Bye.